Hey folks, Jack here. So, uh, been a while since I've done cavalry tutorials on here. Uh, been on a big certification for Glide University on building AI agents, so very educationally focused for a while. And now I'm moving into a more kind of brand motion design role here at Glide. So excited for that and excited to be sharing more with you going forward. So uh, we're doing a uh, homepage refresh at the moment, lots of animations, homepage hero video with like lots of AI uh, video generation, which is actually like becoming a little bit more reliable. So start, I'm really excited to share some of that with you. Um, but in terms of cavalry, I'm trying to build the whole, <clears throat> all the animations in cavalry now. I'm just trying to make that my default, uh, certainly for this kind of animation. So the issue I was having though was with depth sorting, right? Uh, in other words, the layer stack, or if you're coming from a web point of view, Z index, right? Uh, when you're working with duplicates, I, I hadn't got my head around like how to isolate or, or reach into the duplicates and be like, hey, I want that one to be on the top and that one to be on the bottom. Um, and I was kind of doing really hacky ways, which just didn't look good. So I was in the Cavalry Discord today um, and shout out to Matt Pepko, who's on YouTube, and also Kernikoff, who's just always incredibly helpful. Uh, and they helped me with a couple of principles and I just wanted to put it in here. So preamble out the way, here are two primary ways of working with depth sorting. In other words, uh, changing the, the depth of your duplicates. So the first one I would say is the easiest one for this particular use case, and that's using the um, uh, extract submesh. So I'm going to search for extract submesh, and what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to sort of grab and pull out and uh, sort of make a copy of uh, one of these items inside of this duplicate because we're extracting a submesh, in other words, a duplicate inside of this duplicator. So the extract submesh on its own doesn't look like anything, obviously, um, because it needs an input shape. And if we pull in this duplicator, in fact, before I do that, I'm just going to delete the indices here. If we pull in the um, duplicator as the input shape, we're still not going to see anything because we haven't told which we haven't told this shape, the extract submeshes, which submeshes to extract. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to do uh, zero, and we're going to see that submesh. And if we did one as well, we're going to see that one as well. You can see I've got a scaling issue here because on my duplicator, I had a scale up of 1.99. Don't ask me why it was 1.99. Uh, I'm just going to match that on the actual extract submesh shape as well, and we should have sort of a basic, uh, basically a, an exact copy of that. Um, and if I bring back the duplicator now, you can see that we've solved our issue because basically the Z index, again, or the depth sorting is, is determined by where this is in the layer stack. So if I move this now below the duplicator, uh, we're not going to have the that same effect. But if I bring it above the duplicator, um, it's on top of it, so to speak, right? And there's so many things you could do with this now, right? Like now that you have that submesh shape, you could move it over here, uh, you know, you could have it's an, it, there's lots of things you can imagine here uh, that you could do with it, but uh, that was a really cool principle to, to sort of learn about uh, and to solve. So that's extract submesh. The other way, um, which is to me for this particular use case, a little bit more long-winded is using um, 3D matrix, right? So you can see we've got the same effect here, but basically what we've got is we've got um, uh, 3D matrix uh, as a deformer on the duplicator. And then we're basically using um, a fall off to isolate uh, which one it is. That's a bad way of explaining it. I think I should probably should walk you through it to kind of explain it. So um, let's delete all of these things and start from scratch. I'm gonna add a 3D matrix and I'm gonna add that as a um, deformer to the duplicator. So with this 3D matrix, we can basically use position Z to, to move it uh, in, in Z space, right? Just a little bit, like we'd only need it to move a tiny bit, right? Um, and this is instead of sort of depth sorting, right? You're actually working, I believe in, yeah, in 3D space or faux 3D, I'm not totally sure. Um, but then what we wanna do is we want to add a behavior on this and then apply a fall off. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, I'm gonna click use levels here and I'm going to add a behavior of value. Um, and I'm just gonna make that value, uh, I guess just uh, minus one. And then I'm gonna go to the fall off here and I'm gonna add a fall off called a range fall off. And you can start to see what's happening now. There was a tiny little depth sorting change there. Uh, if I go here and I just type zero, we're gonna be targeting only that one. And now if we go back to the value and we change the value here, you can see what's going on. We're only targeting that one. And what's quite nice about this is we, because we're working with Z space, we can actually sort of like push it back through those items there as well. So again, like this now retains the original animation, but we've sort of applied behavior or, or 
changes to one of our duplicates. And all we need to do now is go into this range fall off, which is set to specific indices um, and choose the other one. So again, if we wanted that, that other one, the Excel one, we could, we could do that as well. And of course, all of this is procedural. So you could then add animations to those ones as well. So one final thing that I thought would illustrate this a little bit more is like, let's say I have a, um, like a set of duplicates here. I've done basically the same thing. So I've got this, the, the 3D matrix here. Uh, by the way, if we just pull this off here, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna show you what's going on here. It's a Fibonacci with like a, a Fibonacci distribution with some squares in it, that's it. Um, and if I bring these back, basically we've got that same 3D matrix applied uh, to the duplicator as a deformer. We've got that same uh, value and behavior on the position Z and we've got that same fall off uh, inside of that value, right? So uh, we've got this fall off inside of here. And uh, this is where it's quite cool to play with like the different things in here. So like percentage, you could, you can, you can imagine different animations that could appear with this with, with, to do with depth sorting. This, there, these aren't being, these aren't appearing here. These aren't sort of going in and out of existence. They're actually sort of like floating on top of each other, right? Uh, we could change the transition as well. That could be another one that you do. And then of course you could also uh, do something a bit more random. Like you, one thing I tried was like uh, zero and then you can just change the offset and you get this kind of like random glitchy thing as well. So plenty of things to play with here uh, and some sort of core distinctions that I found really useful about depth sorting and Z index, which I just wanted to put up so that other people could find it. So you could learn this a little bit quicker than I did today.